Today we're going to take a look at anatomical preparations. Oftentimes I feel as if this isn't as discussed as publicly as I'd love it to be, and I thought it's such a wasted opportunity. So today I have an extraordinary part of medical history that I wanted to display and talk about with you guys today, primarily focusing on this custom exploded skull. John's bones. These are called exploded skulls, but they are originally... This is what's called an exploded skull, but another term for them are called bochettes, and that was pioneered by the individual Edmé Francois Chevaux de Bochet. I'm sorry if I butchered that. This was a French anatomist that originally pioneered this way of constructing the skull, and he is accredited as the founder of this technique. Exploded skulls really show the intersection of science and art. Companies such as Auxus and Bastier Tremont were famous for doing beautiful preparations that showcased and highlighted the anatomy of the skull. These pieces ended up being extremely delicate and as a response, a lot of these pieces didn't survive due to damage or time. So to be able to have original pieces such as this is extremely hard to find and I'm happy to showcase one today. The methods of doing exploded skulls are extremely rare today. Currently, there are only between four to five gold and metal smiths that are still doing this original method seen within the US. This one was done custom for the showroom by an artist named Death Isn't the End. This individual is extremely talented and has done a lot of museum and personal preparations for various collections. So I was able to contact this individual in order to prepare this exploded skull for the John's Bones collection. It took over two years and I wanted to talk a little bit more about this piece here. So what is an exploded skull? And no, it wasn't blown up with TNT. An exploded skull is an anatomical preparation that showcases the various parts of the human skull. There are 22 individual bones that make up the human skull, 26 if you're counting the ossicles in the ear. At a certain point, the human skull begins to fuse. So most exploded skulls are created using individuals that were under the age of 30 as their skull hasn't fully fused together yet. Anatomists would soak the human skull in specific chemicals that would cause the sutures to separate. Once this separation has been done, a metal or goldsmith elegantly goes in and does a combination of metal and joinery in order to create this style of preparation. After that, this aids in helping anatomists to better understand human anatomy. There are two main styles of exploded skulls. Typically, French exploded skulls have a little bit more showmanship and craftsmanship when it comes to the preparation methods. But when other medical companies started pioneering their techniques and creating their own versions, such as the Samso exploded skull, they settled for a traditional stainless steel preparation that was a little bit more scientific based compared to the French counterpart who had more showmanship and craft and elegance added to it. Both of them are unique in their own way, but I just wanted to highlight the difference for you. So what was the process of actually creating this exploded skull? Typically, it starts by finding a disarticulated human skull. Here at John's Bones, we wanna make sure that we display and present these pieces at the best possible light that we can. So we thought it would be fitting to pay homage to the original preparation methods. We started by finding a disarticulated skull box. This box was comprised of a human skull that had been disarticulated for anatomy students. This piece specifically was from the 20s. Once we were able to find one of these original boxes, we then had to find an original preparator that was still able to do the method. As I discussed earlier, there are only four to five individuals that are skilled enough to do this within the US, so we were able to find one of the original preparators that are still practicing this technique, and after discussing what we were looking for in this commission, we were able to present and complete this exploded skull. Here at John's Bones, we wanted to pay homage to these original preparation methods. So after we were able to acquire a disarticulated skull, we then wanted to best represent what this history looked like in a modern context. So what makes this exploded skull special is oftentimes the complexity and rarity of a preparation is seen by its movements. This piece has a total of seven movements that allows for the skull to move and pivot to better allow anatomists to see different parts of the skull. Each one of these knobs can be removed in order to enlarge or shrink the skull at will. Oftentimes, the more movements an exploded skull has, the more work and complexity went into creating it. So oftentimes, you can view the rarity and complexity of an exploded skull based on how many movements it has. For instance, this German-made exploded skull by the company Samso has two total movements. 
when you remove this knob, you can actually move the skull back as well as open this. So this is a two movement complication compared to this exploded skull, which has seven total movements. Each of them are unique in their own way, but it's such an interesting categorization of how we see the complexity of exploded skulls. This piece was made by the artist Death Isn't the End. They've had over 20 years of gold and metal smithing experience, and personally, one of my favorite preparators in the market. He's actually famous for his gold accents that all of his pieces are seen having. He also specializes in museum quality restorations and preparations that are done. He does uh, jewelry work as well as skeletal articulations and restoration projects. So anytime that we have a piece here at John's Bones that comes in or is found damaged, we always go to him for restoration and repairs. Here at the business, it's our goal to make sure these pieces are respected and treated to the best of our ability. So any instance that we see that a piece would need an uplift, we always go to him for work. To really highlight the complexity of this piece, it took over a year and a half from the start of the commission to finally getting back in our hands. This process is extremely labor intensive and another exploded skull that I'm in the current process of getting commissioned has been in the works for over two years. So this is an extremely delicate art form and craft and it takes a long time to create these pieces and as a response, they are extremely rare and hard to find. So we recently just got an extremely rare piece into the showroom. This is a real human spine that has been bisected. But what's odd and interesting about it, it actually suffers from kyphosis. Quick side note, scoliosis is an asymmetry from the side of the body. So when you look at a person head on, they either have an asymmetry from this plane. But kyphosis is lesser known, and that's actually from the side. It's seen as a hunchback. So when you look at an individual from this angle, they actually have a hunch within their spine. That's the two major distinctions between scoliosis and kyphosis. This brings me back to the commission. Unfortunately enough, this piece came in with damage and that really goes against our values. Here at John's Bones, our goal is to restore and make sure that these pieces are brought with the most amount of respect and dignity as possible. So after collaborating with Death Isn't the End, after five months of waiting, we finally got the piece back in the showroom and I wanted to unbox it with you guys today. So we here we have the final piece unboxed. I'm so happy with how it turned out. It was an amazing upgrade from the original display that it was in. I really wanted to find a way to display it in a beautiful and elegant way. So we decided on this antique base. The wood is actually a turtle shell and it was famous during the Victorian era for its style and quality. So we were able to find an antique frame in order to house this piece. Death Isn't the End does amazing work and always has a high level of craftsmanship, so I always go to him for whenever I need anatomical preparations. This piece is truly one of a kind and is extraordinarily rare, and I'm honored to have it in the showroom. Here at John's Bone, sometimes we run into pieces that are just in need of love, and we want to do our best ability to make sure that they're respected and protected and displayed in the best possible way. So I wanna make sure that I spend as much time and resources as possible to make sure that these pieces are respected and kept to the best condition. And I think this is an extreme upgrade from the original case it was in and just such a combination of artistry and natural science can help learn and teach more anatomists in the future. I think it's just such a shame sometimes to see these pieces get destroyed or damaged over time. So I'm so glad that there are individuals like Death Isn't the End to provide their resources in order to allow us to mount and display such extraordinary pieces. So this was an extremely long project. It took over five months to complete and I'm honored to be able to have it here at the showroom today. Now let's talk about future projects that we're doing here at John's Bones. We won the cast. <laughs>
and she's gone. This was a skull we just got into the collection and it came from an anatomy collection. So in any opportunity that we get to have disarticulated skulls, we want to do our best to make sure that it's presented in the best possible ability. So my next steps going forward is I plan to collaborate with Death Isn't the End to get another exploded skull commissioned for the business. One thing that people don't realize about exploded skulls is they actually can be reassembled together seamlessly where you would never even tell that the skull has been separated. So this piece enough intact is an important educational tool, but I also then wanted to mount it in order to better allow anatomists to see different parts of the skull. So this is one of the processes that I've been doing within the next couple months. So just to visualize, this is the back half of the skull put together. I just wanted to showcase to you guys what it would look like visually from a disarticulated standpoint back to how the skull would look like assembled. This part of the industry isn't really talked about as much, so I wanted to be as transparent as possible to show you guys what is the process of how we get an exploded skull or disarticulated skull into the showroom and how we go step by step to eventually commissioning it and then getting a final product. So this is how it typically looks like once we get new pieces in, we determine and assess if it's able to be mounted and restored, and from there, we make the appropriate actions to then restore these pieces to its former glory. So I hope you guys found that interesting. Did you find that interesting, Chonk? Did you Did you find that interesting? No, so thank you so much, guys, for if you made it this far in the video. I'm just now getting back into YouTube. It's always been my goal to destigmatize a stigmatized industry and make osteology more accessible to everybody. And I really thought making more digestible YouTube videos talking about different topics in the industry could be informative for you guys to learn more about what happens within this world. So if you found this interesting and you like this video, please subscribe and share it. And I really thank you guys for taking the time in today to learn more about mounting and exploded skulls.